to the eternally curious, unapologetically superstitious Midnight Society Rejects, Stormy Willow welcomes you. We are the eccentric coots, storytellers, explorers, dabblers, practitioners, and paranormal pupils who examine the what's ifs, the what's that's, and WTFs of this dimension and beyond. Hello and welcome to the Stormy Willow podcast. We're your paranormal podcasting sisters. I'm Sarah in South Carolina, along with my beautiful, lovely sister Adele in Albuquerque. Hello, Adele. Hello and hello, listener. (laughs) Just we only have one problem. I like that. Um, So we're doing a St. Patrick's Day special today. So we are recording. Um, on St. Patrick's Day Eve. Um, if you don't, you probably wouldn't know this about us, but St. Patrick's Day is our second favorite holiday next to Halloween. So love, love some St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And we're also Irish, so yes. why not celebrate it? <laughs> and we love beer and all, and we love Ireland. I love you too. I mean, I'm, I'm covered in you two tattoos. <laughs> and potatoes. And I, potatoes. I do love potatoes. So yes. much. Ireland's the best. <laughs> yes. Um, I have a little St. Patrick's Day surprise for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it too early to reveal it? Is it too early in the, in the show? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I'm just curious. Okay. When it well, if you're listening, we're going to have to fill you in. But if you're watching, all right, you ready? Yeah. I got them on. Oh, yeah, the shorts. That's funny. (laughs) They just look like they smell bad. (laughs) So we have um, a St. Patrick's Day tradition. Um, Adele used to live in Chicago, and we would come visit. um, We would always get together on St. Patrick's Day. And so if you've never been to Chicago, may I recommend going on St. Patrick's Day? All about St. Patrick's Day. So flipping fun. And so um, on our, I think I got these on our first St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. There was this amazing store called Hollywood Mirror, which is not there anymore. And that breaks my heart because it was the best, most fun store ever. It was like a Halloween Express, like 24-7, but with like vintage clothes, old vintage t-shirts, costumes. Like arcade I mean, toys things. like you would get yeah. back in the day. It's, it was just the greatest store. And so I purchased these shorts that, if you're listening, they're like, they're from, I would say, 70s, maybe yeah. early 80s, but definitely 70s. And they're like these polyester blend um, boys <laughs> um, gym shorts. And so we call them the sweaty wiener shorts because <laughs> I purchased them for St. Patrick's Day because they're green and they're amazing. And when I tried them on, Adele said... <laughs> It looks like somebody's sweaty wieners been all in there. <laughs> it even had like some guy's name written Tuttle. in like mark. Okay, Tuttle. Yeah. Written in marker like on the waistband. So you can tell it's just like somebody's like shorts they just sweated in like crazy. <laughs> I wear them proudly every St. Patrick's Day. Like they're pretty much cutting off my um, my circulation in my thighs as we speak. But um, they're amazing. <laughs> I I donned them proudly that for St. Patrick's Day in Chicago. I wear them every chance I get on St. Patrick's Day. They're amazing. I love them, and they just make me really happy. So I don't know if you remembered these these beauties. I, I don't think one can forget those shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but what's so funny is like with St. Patrick's Day in Chicago, I mean, we got, we got one nice one and the rest were like miserably cold. <laughs> and so yeah. every other year I have to wear these with like long johns, boots, <laughs> jackets. So I look so stupid. It's like you just can't wear these. Like, I mean, you could, but you would freeze to death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're pretty great. It's usually still pretty cold up there yeah. this time, especially if you're going to, towards the river and wanting to see, like, the green. Which we've uh, never seen the parade somehow. 
I don't know how we couldn't find it. (laughs) It's like supposed to be like like one of the largest St. Patrick's Day parades, and we've yet to ever find it. I don't know how that happened. It's like I think right there on Wacker Drive. Like I don't know how we couldn't find it. Maybe we were on Lower Wacker, and I just didn't know because I I was new to that year. But it didn't stop us from having a blast. I highly recommend Chicago. I I recommend Chicago all the time, but especially Chicago at St. Patrick's Day. It is just something, something really, it's a treat. It's fun. It is so much fun. It's a big deal there. So it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. We've, um, some of my best times have been, (laughs) I've been there. So, yeah, I I don't know for a fact, but I have a feeling that, um, St. Patrick's Day is not as big in New Mexico. (laughs) (laughs) You can go get a margarita. A green. <laughs> You'll have a, I don't think there'll be a lot of green beer, but maybe you can get a margarita. Yeah. A taco. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of like here um, when they have like the German festival. We were so excited and it was like hot dogs and Miller Lights and funnel cakes. And we were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you just go with it. You know, you just like, go Leda Hosen too, and it was like that's German, that's not <laughs> Irish. It was just, a, it was just a, I don't know. It was just a lot happening, but you know, you just make any reason to wear green and party and drink beer, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, so I had to. I can. I mean, these uh, these will probably I have to take these off before uh, they cut off my circulation. So I have to go ahead and show them. Actually, do we need to? Do do we need to pause so you can change? <laughs> no, you're okay. <laughs> but if you see me kind of squirming, it's because I'm taking my pants off. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess speaking of Ireland. That's kind of a topic for my story today. You trying to be like me. To keep it, you know, with St. Patrick's Day. Heck yeah. (laughs) So uh, this is about socialites, drama, and a haunted castle. (laughs) Whoa. I'm down. Okay. Yes. So I I tried to do leprechauns, but there just wasn't much to them. <laughs> really? That's a disappointment. Actually, I think if I did fairies, they kind of tie into that and it would be a much gotcha. bigger topic. But then that gets huge because there's so many different types of fairies and, you know, you get into all the lore and yeah. all that stuff. So I just kept it simple, looked up some haunted places and found a cool story. <laughs> For St. Patrick's well, Day. Ireland's definitely got some crazy history, so I'm sure there's quite a lot of hauntings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it sounds like every well, town in Ireland like hauntings has. of the Emerald Isle. I love it. Yeah, so let me take a swig of beer in honor of St. Patty's Day. Yeah. This is the story of Duckett's Grove. Duckett's Grove. Yes. That sounds like a book, or like that sounds like an episode of Murder She Wrote. Right, it already sounds haunted. I'm down, I like and it already. You can go there today, like you can oh, go yeah. tour the castle. And, and oh whatnot. yeah, that would be amazing. So it's actually out in the countryside. When I looked on the map, I would say it's kind of between Kilkenny and Dublin. And oh my a- gosh, I've been to both of those places. Okay, so I might have passed through and it. And Kilkenny is one of my favorite places in Ireland it is a ball I love it there oh cool yeah I mean if you were if you went Kilkenny to Dublin or vice versa you might have very well passed through um the county Carlow um and it's a small town called Nice Town okay (laughs) shout out hey (laughs) I had probably a handful of people hey friends (laughs) Nice Town show us some love (laughs) <laughs> represent <laughs> um, <laughs> so the estate is 12,000 acres um, so 12, quite large 12,000 acres okay mm-hmm. and originally Duckett's Grove was a modest two story home that was built in 1745 okay but now the Duckett's they were all about climbing the social ladder and Making strategic mar- marriages to like heiresses, oh. grabbing that money. Gotcha. Okay. 
So in the 1820s, John Dawson dug it, hired a famous architect at the time, Thomas A. Cobden, um, to redesign the home in a way more grandiose Gothic revival style. It was supposed to be a, quote, Gothic revival masterpiece. Oh. So it went from this kind of, you know, low-key two-story home to having, like, towers and turrets and what? very dramatic. And um, this is before, like, anybody's married anybody, like. So John Dawson Duckett has married the first heiress. So, okay, so we got some money to do this now. Yeah, he's starting to get some money. Okay. He's hanging out in Dublin, making so friends. I'm thinking, you know, it was one of those, if we build it, they will come situation. Well, okay, it kind of does get to that with his son. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he's he's like, as we're climbing the ladder, we need a home that represents Yeah, we can have a two-story home on 12,000 acres. Right, we can't, we can't have, oh, okay. like, all the socialites of Dublin and uh, the, you know, the local town coming over to our house if it, if it isn't there. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, oh, I just noted super bougie is what they were going <laughs> for. Um, so then by 1830, the family aspired even more socially and financially. And um, then I think, I, I don't know when, um, what's his name, Thomas dies. Or sorry, John Thomas was the uh, architect. But anyway, by 1930, the son William Duckett is now the owner of the house. Okay. He's wanting to make it even more elaborate. And kind of like father, like son, he too marries a very wealthy heiress named Harriet. Okay. So now the house is finally done and they find it suitable to throw sexy parties. Oh, <laughs> you know, okay. Like, and like <laughs> entertain and wine and dine all of the elites. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. So, you know, it seems like they were partying for a while there. And then in 1895, Duckett is 73 and he marries his second wife, Maria Thompson. I believe his first wife passed away. Okay. I'm not totally sure, but I think he's a widower. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. So then Maria Thompson and her daughter, Olive, move into the estate. Olive. Yeah. Pretty cute name. And then William passes in 1908, so he's not really around, like, terribly much longer. And he's the last male, like, bloodline of the Okay. Um, so then Olive and Maria, they're living in solitude on the property. And apparently, it says they became estranged, but apparently they just completely hate each other while they're living here. And, like, not even on speaking terms. I mean, unless they have a big enough space, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And um, Maria finally just abandons the property and moves to Dublin in 1916. She's just like, whatever. I don't even want to deal with this place anymore. I'm assuming Olive leaves too, just from like them talking about who was managing yeah. the property, like while she wasn't living there. So it sounds like they both left. Right. And then Maria died in 1937. And then upon Maria's death, she was still really, really angry with Olive, and she left her, quote-unquote, the angry shilling <laughs> in her will. So, <laughs> petty. Petty, dramatic people, which is another reason it. why this story spoke to me. <laughs> I love this. So, her, she inherited one shilling, but her inheritance should have been 97,000 pounds, and today that would be 6.4 million pounds. Oh. <laughs> so, uh -oh. still, Olive's not very happy about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she ends up going to court and challenging her mother's will. And then this ends up leading to like a week and a half hearing of, you know, why she should get her inheritance. And how right. Mom was just kind of a jerk and like had no re like right to not leave her what she deserves. But the hearing actually revealed that Maria and Olive had a horrible and even violent relationship oh, dear. <laughs> with one another. So then, like, all of Olive's socialite, like, friends are at the hearing, and they're shocked. Like, wow, you guys were this horrible to each other. So it's kind of like their dirty laundry comes out in the hearing. Um, and then I don't know how much it was for, but Olive was granted some sort of a cash settlement. And um, then the Duckets and anybody who had dibs on the house, they're just gone. 
So there was like nobody to contest it, I guess. Yeah, Maybe exactly. It, and I don't know if it's maybe, I, I don't know. I, I feel like people had a lot of kids back then. So it just seems odd that like, they just, they just had the wine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, she was really the only heir to it. And she was actually right. like the step kid abducted. Yeah. She wasn't even like a true bloodline. Like, he I guess, didn't even say. have his own child. Like, yeah. Or any nieces or nephews or me, you know, that's like when I wish I'd just get a letter in the mail. It was like somebody you never knew left you. <laughs> This castle, this haunted in castle Ireland. in Ireland. Yes, <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be amazing. Like, uh, okay, I'm on it. <laughs> Call up my work. Hey, can I work remotely, but in Ireland? <laughs> exactly. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, so it'll be in a castle. I'm not sure how the Wi-Fi is going to work, but yeah. figure it out. And also, you should check out. Like, you should just Google um, Ducket's Grove. Like, it's a really beautiful place. I'm kind of in ruins now, but. I mean, you can see how grandiose it was. Like, they really went, like, all out wanting to make it a statement with how I well just feel you know, like Duckett's Grove. Like, that sounds like, I don't know. Like, it sounds like it should be, like, a series. Yeah, I, I think some today also refer to it now as Carlo Castle because it's in the county of Carlo. But wow, I it think, is really beautiful. I think Carlo probably has a few castles, so I don't know if that's specific enough. But, yeah. Uh, Wow, it is gorgeous. You could tell at one time it was really something. Yeah. So um, then once it was abandoned, like all of this stuff settled with Olive. Um, and in the interim, the estate was being managed by an agent and local farmers. And then during the 1920s, the IRA, which is the Irish Republican Party, uh, used Duckett's Grove as an air training base. Oh, okay. Um, and they actually really took very good care of the property. Like everything was really well maintained and intact, even like the furniture. You don't trash it or whatever. Yeah, so cool. it was still in really good standing. And then one night on April 20th, 1933, the home just completely burns down. And what? they don't they don't know the cause of it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So I'm sure there, there's rumors. <laughs> on maybe it's paranormal or not but uh yeah so it just burned down and it's been in ruins ever since and then in 2005 carlo county council took over so now it's like a place where you can go take tours and visit that's cool yeah but now to like the other paranormal stuff i guess yeah is here so now there are allegedly several angry spirits there and um Supposedly, these ruins are a hotbed of paranormal activity. So, a lot of ghost hunters in Ireland. Oh, that would be so cool there. to do a ghost hunt there. Oh, man. Yeah, it would be pretty awesome. Yeah, it would. So, one of the most famous entities at this location is supposedly a banshee. What? They call her Duckett Grove's Banshee. Now, if you don't know what a banshee is, it's essentially a female spirit that beckons the death of a family member when she wails or shrieks. So if you get visited by a banshee and you hear her wail, probably someone in your family is going to die soon. Now, isn't a banshee also, um, isn't that an Irish? Doesn't that come yes. from? Yes, it's Irish. Wow. Oh, there's a picture of one. I think banshees are a part of like the fairy. Yes, this is a fairy legend and tradition. Yeah. So it's almost like they're hag. Yeah, it really, really reminds me a lot of the hag. Like, you because it looks wearing... like even the pictures look like kind of like an old hag kind of. Yeah. Feel. Like they're usually wearing a gray cloak. They have long hair. Oh, like they're, a witch. Their like eyes are kind of red from constantly weeping. Um, also, that? banshees are in. Hello, my favorite series, The Hollows. The Hollows. But what's cool about banshees in the hollows, which I don't know if it actually ties back to lore, is that banshees kind of feed on negative energy. <laughs> oh. It's like, they'll like bring all this negativity and then everybody gets all negative and then they're like in a feeding frenzy. So it's like oh. if there's a banshee around, like at a mall, people just might start randomly fighting and arguing. And then before you know it, you just have like a mob on your hands all like fighting with each other. Oh. <laughs> and you have a hungry banshee. <laughs> You're like, so when people are like, you know, people are on edge, you know, lots going on right now with gas prices and stuff. Like, no, it's a banshee. It's a banshee. Yeah. It's, not gas. it's not, it's not a possible war or anything. It's a straight up banshee. Like, yeah. 
Spirit <laughs> of Fiesta. <laughs> I'm going to start spreading that around. I'm going to start saying that. I'm like, no, it's not that. That's not why people are on edge. <laughs> Let it's me tell you why. You haven't heard about the feast of the banshees going on right now? <laughs> oh, I, bet some, I bet some news people would buy in for sure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I don't, I don't know. It's fine. Yeah, the banshees are pretty fun in the hollows. But like I said, I don't know how much that actually ties to, her, to the actual lure. If she took liberties, I'm totally fine with that because it makes for a really <laughs> fun story. <laughs> um, I also read somewhere that they can be attached to property or families after a pishog is placed. I hope I said that right, but what that is, is that? essentially a curse. So, oh. so you can supposedly put like a banshee curse on someone who you're oh, pissed man. with. And then that banshee will come and, you know, kind of like destroy their family and ruin their lives. Dang, that's pretty cold. So that's where this banshee kind of ties into the ducats. Um, apparently, I just put the all caps drama. <laughs> so um, apparently William Ducket was cursed by the mother of a girl who he was having an affair with. There it is. There and, it is. Yeah. And she died on the estate while horseback riding with him. So the mom was really pissed off and put a curse Interesting. on him. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's coming together now. Yes. And <coughs> excuse me. Supposedly, and I don't know what time period this is, but it sounds like you can still hear the Manchies shrieks what? at the property. And there have been two reported deaths because of it. Um, so a woman who had heard the banshee supposedly just dropped that on the grounds after hearing it. Um, I one other like more recent times or I don't know. We at least know it's probably after the 1930s. Okay. So I, I mean, don't know. I don't know if it was like the two thousands or like, uh, that's it's like that one. Is that what they put like cause of death? <laughs> so <laughs> if it is, I just, can you please put that on my tombstone? <laughs> Cause of death <laughs> of Shog. <laughs> Please put that on my rock. <laughs> you heard it here, guys. I'm making my request known. <laughs> That's, that would be a pretty epic way to go. <laughs> It'd be like, Sarah was such a lovely person until she heard the bass. She died That's on the spot. <laughs> so. That's pretty awful. Yeah, I mean, just to drop dead because you hear something. Like It's like, you know, what happened to Sue? Oh, you didn't hear? Banshee wailed at her <laughs> and she died. That's pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'm like, whoa, no, it's what? Funny. Like, this is a pretty short story, and it's pretty, uh, obviously has a lot of gaps and, like, lack of detail. So it's kind of fun to... uh Maybe draw your own conclusions about some of this stuff. Yeah. I, okay. I'm sorry. On to the second death. The second death. Um, so a worker there heard the banshee. And then the next day their mother died. Oh. So, yeah, that's kind of sad. Like, mom didn't even have anything to do with it. I know. Like, that's kind of messed up. Like, that's pretty shitty. It's like, yeah. And that person was like just that. working there. They weren't, like doing anything it's like they didn't have anything to do with like the family yeah it wasn't like zach bagans trying to antagonize or anything yeah <laughs> so oh, there you go they didn't i couldn't find an account of the identities of these people or years so interesting take that with what you that would be pretty bad like if you're going to be like i'm going to ireland and you're going on this tour of this castle like something like that happened yeah <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible <laughs> it's times like that when i'm glad i'm kind of part of hearing like tom's not coming home but like i didn't hear anything <laughs> drinking and driving or you know drinking and got you know fell no he heard the banshee she heard the banshee's call <laughs> that's crazy okay wow all right yeah, so apparently that banshee is still there and still wailing away in the towers. So maybe, like, if you're going to go on a tour here, maybe take some earplugs. 
Yeah, or like listen to like audiobooks or something. Yeah, I just don't just protect your ears. Yeah. Definitely, but you might not escape the ghosts. <laughs> oh, okay, we don't even know about them. Okay. Yeah, so there are a lot of ghost accounts. Um, so you can sometimes hear workers. It sounds like they're kind of working in a busy kitchen, but that doesn't mm. exist anymore. Okay. So it's just like, oh, they're still preparing for like the parties and stuff back in the day. You can also hear horses and carriages rolling up to the entrance that's no longer there. Oh, that's just, cool. Like, yeah. I even heard one account that you could see them, but you can hear or see them. That's pretty crazy. And kind of textbook, you hear disembodied voices, bangs, see orbs and shadows. Um, It's like a highly active place, it sounds like. Yeah, there's even been reports of full-bodied apparitions, and these are believed to be the Duckett family members. Oh, I love a full-body apparition. Yeah, including William Duckett himself riding a horse on the grounds. Interesting. Some say maybe he's reliving that fateful day when his mistress died. And some say that the ghost of the woman who made the curse, like the the mom that cursed them with the banshee, that she is now unable to move on because of the curse. Ah, so they're kind of stuck. Yeah, so careful if you're going to, you know, curse somebody with banshee, you just might not be able to cross over. (laughs) Oh, man. Um, And then the last point I have, which this is kind of Zach Bagans, if you're going here. Um, Apparently, a lot of investigators provoke the Duckets with uh, Catholic relics because the Duckets were very strong Protestants. Oh. And it stirs up the activity there. That's pretty crazy that that's a big deal even in the afterlife there in Ireland. (laughs) Catholic or Protestant. Still just like, can't not the rosary. <laughs> yeah, so. The yeah. mom can go there. <laughs> or she might piss off some ghosts. Uh, <laughs> I'd be stirring up activity. That's interesting. Right. Oh my gosh. That is, I mean, wow. That's a lot happened in there. So yeah, I mean, it was actually like a pretty short period of time too. Like the two-story home built around 1745 and then like the whole family being gone by like the 1930s that's crazy like no lineage really yeah which just seems i'm i'm used to castles and things being so old there but like this is like right. on par with american history um right yeah that's true there were new money <laughs> yeah nouveau riche <laughs> didn't last long <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy but it looks like i was doing a google uh search when we were talking and it just looks amazing so yeah, so it's like I mean, such a cool place to go. I, I think love to do it. Definitely on a list to like visit, especially after hearing some of the stories about the ghosts. And yeah, that'd be so cool to do like a ghost tour there. Yeah. So, um, well, that's the story of Duckett's Grove. I know it's kind of a short one, but oh, I nice. wanted to do something special related to Ireland without being too specifically related to St. Patrick's Day. Right. No, I think that's such a great one. I love it. I think it's really cool. Um, so much history there. And just like, because when we were there, it was, I mean, the same like with England and, and places like that. It's just like, it's so hard to wrap your head around how old some of this stuff is, you know, when you're there. I remember we went to um, the Aran Islands and there was a cemetery there. And just like the how far back the gravestones dated to it was just the most eerie but like peaceful thing it was just i don't know it was just something really neat about it it's cool yeah, I, I, like we're talking about first humans like first like homo sapiens with like it's, language <laughs> like, it's really hard <laughs> yeah it's really hard I, I mean i guess especially being born and raised in america it's yeah. hard to wrap your head around like touching something or seeing something that is really that old, you know? And that's the thing I love so much about London is I just love the hustle and the bustle and the newness, but yet the oldness that's mixed with it. I think it's just, it's so cool. Everything just still kind of has like that look, like it's just like layers of time yeah. on top of one another. And it just, you can kind of just feel it in the air. You can. I love it. I definitely recommend. Like, I'm so glad that hopefully we're coming out of COVID and I can do some overseas travel again. I mean, I, I mean, I love, ex- you know, exploring America in itself, but it's really cool if you never had a chance to to get overseas and see stuff that just, 
don't know, just to touch it and see it and experience it. It's just something really magical. Yeah, I definitely like to go back to England for leisure, not um for yeah. It's never fun when you travel for work. Was, I remember used to, I used to think that. I used to be like, oh I can't I wish I had a job where I traveled, but you don't. It's not the same. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does i love this story i've not heard of this family or this castle um but i definitely liked it it was really cool they seem like they would have been a fun bunch to uh people watch <laughs> oh yeah i bet they threw down at uh, some saint patty's day parties <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh so what are you guys doing for saint patrick's day i mean i don't think we're doing anything because you're sleeping yeah. I'm not aware of like a parade or anything here. It watch it be so big there. I will like <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll watch like the leprechaun and drink some beer. <laughs> I love it. Well, let me tell you, Adele and I, I'm gonna leave you guys with a funny story. So as I mentioned before, Adele and I love St. Patrick's Day. And so <laughs> Adele was here in South Carolina. We decided that we were gonna like take the day off and we were just going to like do St. Patrick's Day. Like we were just going to spend a CC day together and we were going to get up early, have a good breakfast. I mean, deck out and go to, at the time, the only pub in Rock Hill. <laughs> and so like we get there at like 12, we're the only two people in the whole pub. <laughs> and, like, we asked for like a Guinness or something and they were like, you're going to go upstairs for that. And we're like, okay. <laughs> And, like, we're just literally, and then the funny thing is, like, we decided that we were responsible, so, like, we're going to just walk there, and then I lived really close, so, like, we were going to walk there, we're going to stay there all day, and we're going to walk back, and we're walking, and this guy, like, rolls, this older guy, just, like, rolls down his window, and he says, hey, girls, what do you say, like, what's with all the green? What's with all the green? <laughs> and we were like, what's St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> what is happening? And we just we get to the bar or to the pub like only two people there for like uh, I want to say a couple hours. Yeah, I mean, and it was like on a weekend. Yeah, it's not like it a was, random Tuesday, it's like a Saturday. It's like Saturday. Like we were the only two people there drinking our beer in an Irish pub wearing all green. I want to say even the bartenders weren't really dressed up or anything. It was just like you and I, like we were. T I'm like. We were like, it is St. Patrick's Day, like, right? Like, what's happening? Yeah. And then, like, people started coming, and it just ended up being a total shit show. It was, such, it was the worst St. Patrick's Day ever. It it's was like, terrible. We were, like, somehow the most sober people there, and, and then we everybody was shit-faced by, like, 8 o'clock p.m. Yes, and we were just like, this is not fun. And we ended up having to babysit everybody. It, it yeah. was just not good. It was and we ended up just going to the Waffle House? Yes. Because by that point, I remember looking at you, and we were like, it's 9 o'clock. I think you had been thrown up on. Um, I had, I, we weren't even buzzed. We were ready to have a good time. And we're like, you know what? There was that guy that you kept getting fights with. God, yes. He tried to, like, pick up a friend of a friend who couldn't even stand up because she was so drunk. And I just basically was like, sir, you need to leave. Um it was it was horrible. So it basically <laughs> ended with like coffee and waffles at nine o'clock. And I really I want to say we went back to my house and watched Ghost Adventures. Yeah, I, I think we like did. That's what that happened? <laughs> so, I think so, which is like it, what we should have just done in the first place was have we should have just gotten fun. we should have gotten some beer and just stayed at the house. But we were so excited. We're like we are going to do it up, and it was just the weirdest, most awful St. Patrick's Day of all time. <laughs> Yeah, didn't even have any par paranormal experiences on top of it. No paranormal experiences, no shots of anything delicious. No. Only two people at an Irish pub <laughs> on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah. uh, having to be a babysitter, getting thrown up on, and eating waffles. <laughs> That's, that was, <laughs> but it's, it's so funny now, but do you have a favorite St. Patrick's Day memory? Hmm. I mean, that one's really, really hard to talk. That one's up there. <laughs> um, I still don't understand how we couldn't find the parade, though, that yeah. first year in Chicago. You think it really exists, or did I just say that? <laughs> we've missed it every time. That's the thing. It's not just yeah. that one year. We always I don't know. Like, how do we know. do that? <laughs> What's wrong with us? <laughs> But 
yeah, no, that, I, that was fun that first year in Chicago. Just because was, I didn't realize what a big deal it was. And it just, is everywhere. It's just I it's saw on social that they died the river this week. Yeah, after it made it, me so happy. Years. Yeah, so oh, it's gonna be it's gonna, it's gonna be, be wild. On it's Saturday, be so fun. I wish I was there. Yeah, I miss not seeing you on St. Patrick's Day. It's really weird. I hate that. We got to do better next year. Yeah, maybe we can meet in Chicago next year. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Or somewhere warmer. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Savannah, they do a big St. Patrick's Day thing too. That'd be cool. Yeah, we'll figure something out or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Savannah and Chicago, too good. Savannah's supposed to be really haunted. So it is very haunted. It is. I've experienced it. Yeah, maybe we should go to Savannah next year. Yeah, definitely. Well, if you guys like what you heard, um, you can always check us out at stormywillow.com or follow us on Instagram. Sometimes we post on Facebook, but mostly Insta and stormywillow.com is how you can find us. And we hope that you have a marvelous St. Patrick's Day, as they say in Ireland, Solange. Nice, yeah. And And Adele uh, says, Stay safe and stay safe. Curious, there it is. Thanks for listening. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Have a good one.